Thank you very much for tuning in. I do not replace scripture study. Everyone should be reading on their own, pondering his truths, and gaining a testimony for themselves by the power of the Holy Spirit. However, I would like to be a witness for the Savior that he lives, he will return, and we should all be preparing for that glorious day. And without further delay, let's go ahead and continue our studies. We're in um, Mosiah chapter 10. And as I always do, I will read and expound as we go along. King Lemon dies, his people are wild and ferocious, and believe in false traditions. Zenith and his people prevail against them. Verse 1, And it came to pass that we again began to establish the kingdom, and we began, and we again began to possess the land in peace, and I caused that there should be, a, a, be weapons of war made of every kind, that thereby I might have weapons for my people, against the time the Lamanites should come up again to war against my people. Verse 2, And I set guards round about the land that the Lamanites might not come upon us again unawares and destroy us. And thus I did guard my people and flocks and kept them from falling into the hands of our enemies. Verse 3, And it came to pass that we did inherit the land of our fathers, for many years, yea, for the space of twenty and two years. Verse 4, And I did cause that the men should till the ground, and raise all manner of grain, and all manner of fruit of every kind. Verse 5, And I did cause that the women should spin and toil, and work, and work all manner of fine linen, yea, and cloth of every kind, that we might clothe our nakedness. And thus we did prosper in the land, Thus we did have continual peace in the land for the space of 20 and 2 years. So let's wrap these previous verses together. A couple of things that stuck out to me. We never want to be um, engaging in war unless it's absolutely necessary. So in this context, what I learned from this, these verses, you do want to be prepared to protect yourself, which is important. The other thing is about work. So a lot of us have specialization. What that means is we have different talents, things we're good at, things that we may not be good at. Men and women naturally have certain talents that they're born with. What I take from these verses is important it is for us to work and providing for our um, communities, helping out other people. And I know nowadays a lot of us want to have those jobs where we feel like where we're not doing any work per se. Not everyone can do that, but even if we had those type of jobs where we were had enough income, where we didn't feel like we were working as much or as strenuous, what I know that we should be doing is giving back to the community with that extra time or extra energy that we have. So this verse makes it clear to us that working is not just to make money. I know a lot of us correlate that to mean the same, meaning that we need money so we work, but Making money is not the only reason that we work. God created this earth and wants us to work so we keep the earth clean, we keep it organized. So that was the thing that kept in mind. It's good to have money, yes, work for money. We need to survive. However, don't make it so exclusive where work and money are hand in hand where you only do work because of money. So there are times when we need to serve our community and help out other people in order to keep the land clean and to keep the earth moving, you can say as well. So that's what I took from that. And I like how he's encouraging the people to work and to be productive. Verse six, and it came to pass that King Laman died and his son began to reign in his stead, and he began to stir his people up in rebellion against my people. Therefore, they began to prepare for war and to come up to battle against my people. Verse 7, but I had sent my spies out round about the land of Shalom, Shalom, that I might discover their preparations, that I might guard against them, that they might not come upon my people and destroy them. Verse 8, and it came to pass that they came, upon, came up, up upon the north of the land of Shalom, with other numerous hosts, men armed with bows and with arrows and with swords and with scimitars and with stones and with slings, and they had their heads shaved 
that they were naked and they were gird with a leathern girdle about their loins. So a couple of things in that verse, verse eight in particular, leathern, you can think of as a piece of leather. So basically they have a piece of leather, uh, leather going from their waist down. And the other thing, uh, scimitar, that word trips me up sometime, but it's basically a little short sword. And those are the things to keep in mind. So obviously the Lamanites are preparing for war, unfortunately, but the Nephites are prepared to defend themselves. Verse nine, and it came to pass that I caused that the women and children of my people should be hid in the wilderness. And I also caused that all my old men that could bear arms and also my young men that were able to bear arms should gather themselves together to go to battle against the Lamanites. And I did place them in their ranks, every man according to his age. Verse 10, and it came to pass that we did go up to battle against the Lamanites. And I, even I, in my old age, did go up to battle against the Lamanites. And it came to pass that we did go up in the strength of the Lord to battle. Verse 11. Now the Lamanites knew nothing concerning the Lord, nor the strength of the Lord. Therefore, they, depend, they depended upon their own strength. Yet there were a strong people as to the strength of men. Verse 12. They were a wild and ferocious and a bloodthirsty people believing in the tradition of their fathers, which is this, believing that they were driven out of the land of Jerusalem because of the inequities of their fathers, and that they were wrong in the wilderness by their brethren, and they were also wrong while crossing the sea. Verse 13, and again, that they were wrong while in the land of their first inheritance after they had crossed the sea, and all this because that Nephi was more faithful in keeping the commandments of the Lord, therefore he was favored of the Lord, for the Lord heard his prayers and answered them, and he took the lead of their journey in the wilderness. So now, as we can see, this we, we saw this from the very beginning of the Book of Mormon, where we saw the division between Nephi and his brothers, Laman and Lemur. So this set the stage for what's happening now, that there's two sides. Now they're basically simplified into Nephites and Lamanites. But this is really important to understand that the Lamanites are based upon basing their hatred on what their fathers have taught them, which is why it's very important for us to teach other people and to not let them be be uh, misled into false understandings or false traditions. So unfortunately, this is what happened to the Lamanites. They're believing in what their forefathers, which again, Laman, Lemuel, and all those that put themselves together with the Lamanites are teaching them that, oh, you should hate the Nephites, they wronged you, and that's causing a continual of hatred. And now the Nephites have to defend themselves. But the other important thing about how strong the Nephites are, and that, yeah, the Nephites are strong, but specifically the Lamanites, they're strong, but they don't have God's help. So that's the equalizer, and you can say the difference maker, which is having God to be with us. Now let's say the Nephites and the Lamanites are both strong, but the Nephites have God to be with them. Obviously, the Nephites will have infinite potential at that point. So there's no way the Lamanites will be able to win. So that's why it's also important that, yes, we have strength, but we're also trusting in God because he has all power. So unfortunately for the Lamanites, they're driven by hatred, but they also don't have God to be with them, obviously, because God wouldn't be with them if anyone, any of us have hatred in us. But again, this is unfortunate, but this is what's transpiring. Verse 14, and his brethren were wroth with him because they, un they understood not the dealings of the Lord. They were also wroth with him upon the waters because they hardened their hearts against the Lord. Verse 15, and again, they were wroth with him when they had arrived in the promised land because they said they, that he had taken the ruling of the people out of their hands and they sought to kill him. Verse 16. And again, they were wroth with him because he departed into the wilderness as the Lord had commanded him and took the records which were engraven on the plates of brass, for they said that he robbed them. So as you can see, the Lamanites passed on a lot of lies, and this happens nowadays. People are being convinced of things that are not true, which is why it is critical, two parts. Number one, 
that we always have the spirit to be with us. So that's the instant reward that we have for doing goodness. I know at times when we're keeping the commandments, we're doing things, things good. We don't see the temporal blessings, which will come. We see other people may have nice clothes, nice houses, nice cars, and we shouldn't be lifted up in pride for those things. Obviously, we should have enough to survive. But a lot of times when we see other people are making it, they got more money, they're not keep, keeping the commandments and all that stuff. I've, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Those people that are rich of the, of the world, but they don't have the spirit to, with, to be with them, it is not better than us that may be poor or may be lacking money, but we have the spirit to be with us. There is nothing in this life, my brothers and sisters, nothing in this life that is better than having the spirit to be with us. And I know that to be true. And that's what I'm taking from this context here that we won't be misled like the Lamanites if we're looking for righteousness and we have the spirit to be with us because obviously they were convinced of hatred. And because of the tradition going on and on throughout their history, the spirit no longer strive to be with them. And so without the spirit, they're just wandering and they're, they're clueless to the things of God. So again, that's why it's very important that we have the spirit to be with us, that way we're not misled by any, any false teachings. Verse 17, and thus they have taught their children that they should hate them and that they should murder them and that they should rob and plunder them and do all they could to destroy them. Therefore, they have an eternal hatred towards the children of Nephi. Verse 18, for this very cause has King Laman by his cunning and lying, lying craftiness and his fair promises deceived me that I have brought this people into this, uh, up into this land that they may destroy them. Yea, and we have suffered these many years in the land. Verse 19, and now, now I, Zenith, after having told all these things unto my people concerning the Lamanites, I did stimulate them to go to battle with their might, putting their trust in the Lord. Therefore, we did contend with them face to face. Verse 20, and it came to pass that we did drive them again out of our land, and we slew them with a great slaughter, even so many that we did not number them. Verse 21, and it came to pass that we returned again to our own land, and my people again began to tend, tend their flocks and to till their ground. Verse 22, and now I being old did confer the kingdom upon one of my sons, therefore I say no more, and may the Lord bless my people. Amen. And so that concludes the chapter there. And to wrap up these uh, previous verses, so as you can see, the Lamanites came to try to destroy the Nephites again, no matter how strong the Lamanites were. Because the Nephites had God to be with them, there's no way they will prevail against them. So that's something to always keep in mind. And I wanted to conclude with my testimony that I know these things are true, that God will preserve us if we seek to do righteousness. And if we fall short of doing goodness, we can repent because the atonement is real. I know that the Book of Mormon is true. It is the holy word of God. And if we want to fill the spirit on a continual basis, not only do we need to be keeping the commandments, but if we study all of God's scriptures, we will have a closeness to the spirit that we all desire. We will be guided and directed. I know that the spirit is there to testify of all things that are true and to help us to see through deception that we, we do not be deceived by the devil or the craftiness of other people. I know that the Savior will return and that glorious will be that day. And I leave you all with my testimony in his holy name, Jesus Christ. Amen.